Isn't that good? How many of you, you actually names of God to the Lord like that? You know, Jehovah Shalom. You know, different ones like that. That is amazing. I was sharing with the first service. I was talking to Marilyn Hickey. She's like our spiritual mama. And we've known her for, golly, man, it's like 30 years or so. But anyway, one day we, her and I were talking. And I said, Marilyn, I said, you know, you wrote that book about all the different names of God. And I said, you know, I came across one in the book of Chronicles. And it's, uh, it calls it the good Lord. And she said, oh, yeah, that's Jehovah the good. And sometimes we don't realize that that's also, and I wish I could say the Hebrew name, I would probably mess it up. So, but you know, it's just good to say Jehovah the good, but God is a good God. And he even wrote it in his name. And I like that how, when he said to Moses, when he was getting ready to meet with him, he said, I'm going to cause all my goodness to pass before you. I want to say this, if you're ever in a struggle, you know, or maybe you've got bills uh, that are piling up, or maybe you don't feel right in your body or Maybe you got some hardship at work or your life. Something that I pray often in my life when I just, man, I just, ugh. I say, Lord, if you pass by Moses in your goodness, I just ask that your goodness would pass by me. Let your goodness pass by me. And then one day I said that, the Lord said, Hank, not only will my goodness pass before you, but something's following you. And it's my goodness and my mercy every day of your life. That's the promise of Psalm 23. Isn't that powerful? So never forget that the goodness of God is pursuing you every day. It follows you. So start being aware of it. And when you are aware of his goodness, man, he will wow you and bless you beyond all you could ask or think. And something that I've been trying to get better at in my life, and God, you're listening, is I just want to take moments throughout the day to just stop for a moment and look up and just say, you know, I'm thinking of you. I really am. I have you on my heart today, and I really just love you. I really do. And then other things I've been trying to do is just stop throughout the day and say, God, I just probably haven't told you today, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And then I start naming things off. You know, thank you for the beautiful weather. Thank you for, you know, the clouds. You know, God, thank you for just being who you are. And you know what I've noticed since I've been doing that? is a closeness that you feel with God. You, I mean, it's like his presence just hovers over you. It's really very powerful. So uh, practice that this week. I'm just trying to give you a little tip that might help you and encourage you. All right, I want you to do this. Those of you that are watching, I want you to hold this up because this is a very important thing. This isn't some religious, you know, ceremony where we get all somber and, and religious. This, this is a powerful meal. And Jesus said these words in John 10. He said in verse 10, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And then he put a distinction, a separation between himself and the devil. He said, but, but I have come to give you life and life more abundant. You know, he wants you to have abundant life. You know what kind of life he was talking about? Zoe, which is the God kind of life. Okay, well, Pastor Hank, what kind of life is that? Well, he was talking about health healing, wholeness, soundness of mind, a blessed memory, blessed memory recall. He was talking about preservation over your life, divine protection. He was talking about prosperity, wisdom, forgiveness, eternal life. These are all the package of that abundant life. And here's what's beautiful. It's right here. And that's why Jesus said in John 6, every time that you take of his body and his blood, he says, my life is in you then and then he said my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed in other words he's trying to say you are what you eat if you eat his flesh that is full of life the god kind of life what happens when it goes into your human flesh that life is released it's like a vitamin capsule or something man it's like activated all right let's hold up that which he said is his body and and i always like to thank him because, man, I tell you what, what he went through on his body whew, is the Bible calls him the lamb that was led to the slaughter. So you can imagine how beaten and bloodied and, you know, mangled he was. In fact, one translation says they couldn't even look at him. They were appalled, which means they threw up when they looked at Jesus on the cross. And he did that for us, man, so that we could have that life. So, Lord, we thank you for your body. 
Jesus, it was wounded for our transgressions. It was bruised for our iniquities. You took the chastisement, the punishment of our peace. Lord, it was laid upon you. And they whipped you. And God, by your stripes, Yeshua, we are already healed. We were healed. So we partake of this body. And as we do, let's partake. We receive that Zoe life. All the package benefits go into us. It's enforced, manifested in us and through us. And then he said that if we drink, he said, this is my blood. And you know what? You receive forgiveness. Man, protection, deliverance. And so I want us to hold this up to him. And I want us to thank him. Thank you for your sacrifice, Jesus. Thank you that you are sin's offering. Thank you. And as we partake of your blood, we are sealed. Our families are sealed. Kept from harm and danger. Redeemed from destruction and tragedies and calamities. Crowned with tender mercies and loving kindness according to Psalm 103. Forgiven of all iniquity. Healed of every disease. Because of the covenant that's been sealed and ratified by your blood. We celebrate this today as we partake. We are sealed in that blood and by the Holy Spirit of promise. We're blessed. Isn't that a great feeling to walk around knowing you're blessed? Amen. Come on, ladies, you know what it's like when you fix up and you walk with attitude. Come on, dudes, you know what it's like when you put on those swag clothes and, right? You have bling. By the way, Matt, you wear bling. Don't let anybody ever criticize you. Because here's why. Bling is actually biblical. And the reason I know it, because I had an angel stand before me. Those of you that remember this in the church. He stood right here. And man, oh man, he had bling on him. And he had a scroll in his hand. And I was to read off the scroll in this visitation. And people that were here at that time know... Uh, a few days later, it was headline news what I was reading off. But he had bling. He had like gold chain. Looked like the Mr. T of angels or something, man. But you say, well, I don't believe in that. Well, then let's go to the Bible. God put in the garden diamonds and rubies and emeralds, right? All for the woman. He didn't expect it to just be hidden underneath the rocks. But also so that they could have nice jewelry and things. But how about this? You know why the devil makes fun of bling? Because he was blinged out. But when Jesus, that's why I don't criticize bling. Now, unless it's satanic looking stuff. But the devil was blinged out and he lost every bit of bling when he was stripped of it. When Jesus went down into hell and made a public display over him. So, amen. All right. I want so, you to. So, Pastor. What? Matt, go show him your. What is that? Okay, so. He, he's, he, his bling oh, is like let me see it. Let me see it. Jesus with the crown of thorns. I don't know if they can get it on the camera, but can they get it over there? Wow, look at that bling. That's Jesus with the crown of thorns. Get That's the really awesome. It's beautiful. I like it. Very nice. All right, I Jesus like wears that. a gold band around his chest, Revelation says, so. There you go. Well, there he's blinged so out. Bible. All right, so I want you to do this. I want you to greet one another and say, if you could bling anything. What? No, that's kind of dumb. How about this? Okay, so Pastor Gene jumped out of an airplane yesterday. He's going to show the video tomorrow on Flashpoint. So greet one another and say, if someone gave you a free opportunity to drop out of a plane, would you do it? Yes. Well, you're supposed to say it to one another, all right? So agree, agree one another and find out if they would jump out of a plane. Thank you, Pastor Matt. By the way, Brenda... I know you don't have your phone, but you, you, you just got a text message. 
I sent you one. I sent you a heart. Yes, a very loving heart. And then I'm going to send you what's for dinner in just a minute. So we're going to figure that out. So, our, huh? Oh, leftovers. How many of you have Sunday leftovers? If you take a nap, you get up, you have leftovers. Listen, honey, you're a great cook, so I'm looking forward to that. All right, so how many of you are registered for OTH? Hold on, I'm looking at the hands. Oh, there's still some that haven't registered. Your hands aren't up. All right. Hopefully, hearing these testimonies and those of you that are watching, there's no excuse. I understand there's reasons you can't come. But listen, wait till you hear Victor and how far uh, he came. There was a person, they cracked me up. I don't know if I can find it. I was just looking at the, um, I was looking at the, uh, uh, the comment here. It was so funny they, when they see Victor. Um, I don't see it. Where did it go? Anyway, I'll look for it over there a while. You guys listen to these testimony from Victor and from Hulk Hogan's brother, Hank, about... <laughs> Why you need to be at OTH. Roll it. Victor, Victor, no, no, over here. This camera right here, Victor. Oh, here. oh, 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 okay. Hey, oh, uh, hi, my name is Victor Borvich. Uh, me, um, we greet you from a very distant, very distant land. Um, we came to uh, the conference uh, the, here that you had uh, last year. We came to HOT, and it was hot. But I invite you, because me and my family, Helga, and the rest of my uh, 18 children, we came uh, across the sea, we swam, we got here open borders. Uh, they, that is one good thing. Um, we're still here, because border open. But uh, we want you to come. Uh, or what was the number, or what was the... O-T-H. O-T-H. Okay, I think I remember. O-T-H. You get there, but anyway, I had all of my animals. I had the camels. I had, you know, I picked them up while I was here. And people, when they walked into uh, the, the conference, they said, um, you Noah? I said, yeah, you like the ark. <laughs> but uh, this year, I don't bring no one. I, don't, I, I just bring... I bring my wife and my family. You bring your wife. You bring family. And here's the thing. Uh, Judah Roar, man, uh, it reminds me of the lions back where I'm from. And the lion, you know, anyway, they roared. Even the people roared. And you can roar too. So make sure you come and you can roar. If you never roared before, we'll get someone to step on your foot. And then you'll roar. And yeah, you make great noise for God. But be there at O-T, what, what is it again? O-T-A. Yeah, all the, all the stuff is down there. You can, you can sign up. Um, you can sw start swimming now and maybe get there in time for, for a great conference. Okay, uh, get there to conference. And then they also have a great guy named Pastor Honk. Pastor Honk is an amazing man and his wife Benda. You, you will really like it. So anyway, come to the conference. I see you there. I greet you at the conference this year. And don't forget, roar. See you there. Hello, I'm Hank Hogan. No, you, you know my brother, bigger brother, Hulk. I'm Hank Hogan. He may be a little bit bigger, but he's not as strong as I am. Listen, OTH 2024, some of you are saying you're tired. Nonsense! Now's the time to be strong and show your strength. And I'm going to tell you there's a perfect way to do it. OTH 2024, where you can come and get strong. We're going to pump you up, and you'll walk out of there ready to take on any kind of agenda that's trying to steal our freedom from this great country. Remember, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But anyway, we wrestle against the devil. When we come together, there's all the information. You can register. We're going to push back on the devil, and there is going to be a put it back. And I tell you, this is the year to do it. So I'll see you at OTH. And if you think I'm yelling, that's just the way I talk. <laughs> anyway, see you there. I can't wait until we... Pump each other up for God and take our country back. See you there. <laughs>